Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream, happy sewing. Hello. All right. Did that seem different to you guys? Hi, Deborah, Donna, Martina, Dar. How's it going? Welcome. All right. So yesterday I scheduled the stream and then today I saw it in my, my like content, you know, and I was like, okay, it says I can just click control room. So I clicked control room and then I was like, okay, let's go live. And then I couldn't figure out how to do it from there from YouTube's thing. So then I just did it my own way. Oh my gosh, I felt like I was live th in three different spots. So hopefully it wasn't like that for you guys. Hey Penny. Yeah, I'm gonna make the shorts too. I think like um, that would be, I would get a lot of use out of that because I really like gardening with things where I don't have a waist so things can't drop into my pants, you know? Not without a waist, but you know what I mean? Like it's covered. And I will garden often with a dress and um, and there's problems with that because it gets snagged on things. Hi, Ursula. How's it going? All right. So tell me how everything looks and feels and everything. Um, I This is so interesting. I'm watching this from the control room, which I never do. I'm such a bad streamer. I know. Let me make it. I'm trying to get it so I can actually understand what's on the screen here, too. This is kind of interesting. I don't really know... <laughs> I don't really know what I'm looking at. All right, so anyway. All right, where is it? Okay, I think everything's okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I've always wanted to try the control room in YouTube. I used to use it a little, but I couldn't make the chat large enough to see from this distance. And um, I thought I'd try it again because they launched a whole new thing last year. So yes, they are, Penny. Hi, Malin. How's it going? All right, so I think, let's see. So what I have here is the Yanta overalls. It's really distracting that I can see my screen, stream on the screen. <laughs> and I'm gonna be making this shorts version here. Actually, I just need to look at the stream version. I need to see what you can see, there we go. You're wearing your Yantas today? That's awesome. Hi, Florentine. Hello, Byzanken, Byzanikin. Byzanikin. That, that's a word that's gonna get stuck in my head for like four days because it's like Byzantine <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna make this short version. I Feel like at first I was like, you know what? I'm kind of cheating making the shorts people are gonna think I'm trying to get out of doing more sewing But then I was like wait, it's the same amount of sewing I'm just not sewing the the inseam and the outseam for the lower portion. So we're good. Hey Sharon. Hi Elena. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see everybody. How'd you get, do you guys have a good weekend? The weather was so amazing here. I didn't get to spend it much outside, but you know, I tried. 
All right, so I never went and got the overall clasps. I kept saying I needed. I know. Um, things just happen. Hi, Hannah. How's it going? Oh, nice. What's the ES Clyde pants? Who's ES? I'm sure I've heard of that, but I don't know. Hey, Mrs. Necro. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Look at all the, what, why are you guys, there's a lot of playbacks. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> this is so funny watching it from there. Um, all right. So I have, I thought maybe I would put some sort of ribbon trim. I don't know. Is that kind of too cutesy? I have so many ribbons though. And you know, it might be kind of interesting. This one's, there we go. I love this kind of Scandinavian style of graphic as well. You know, this one, I think I pulled off of something else that I had and this one runs vertically, but it's kind of cool. This one's a vintage one. So that's kind of interesting. Elizabeth, Suzanne, thank you. I haven't sewn any of their patterns. So thanks for telling me about that. I think I've heard of the Clyde pants though. Thank you so much to everybody who answered my poll and sent me messages about the jean sewing. <clears throat> um, I just, I feel like I'm a little bit on a, a minor mission to sew every pair of indie, you know, not indie, um, home sewing pattern version of jeans. Then when I saw how many there were, I was like, okay, maybe not every single one, but I would like to know which, which ones came up the most often. And that was really interesting because there was a, a few companies I'd never even heard of, a few patterns by companies I'd heard of, but a few patterns I hadn't heard of. And I really want to focus on a pattern that is intended for jeans, but you don't have to make it in denim, but you know, like someone might buy it because they're gonna make themselves a pair of jeans. I'm doing denim, Mrs. Necro. So uh, that was really helpful hearing that and hearing a, few, a little bit of feedback from people as well. So I, I do plan on making a few of the ones. And, um, and to be clear, I wasn't looking for like tutorials on how to make them. It was really just the jeans patterns you guys are most interested in, especially if it had inclusive sizing um, and there were men's patterns as well. I'd really like to add more menswear to my channel. So, oh, it's, it's getting a little sunnier out here. So, all right. So I think what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to do one modification and I don't think you guys are going to be disappointed, um, but I'm going to add side seam pockets. So I don't feel like for those of you who don't want to do that and they, and they want to do these patch pockets, you're still fine, right? Cause we're going to do those on the back. You'll know how to do those, right? So I can, um, I'm, you don't have to do the side seam pockets, but I actually just really want some pockets that are a little bit more secure for what I'm going to put in them. You know what I mean? And there's another reason I have an ulterior motive. I've been working on my fabric designs and one of the ones I've made is this one. And I'm still working on the scale. So these are my prints, like my trial prints. They're not up for sale. And so one of the ones I'm making is this one. This has been many different colorways, but you can kind of see. This is my a fabric design that I'm working on. So I have uh, it in a few different colors. See a little green. There's a heart that's green. And then the, of course it does. And there's, I think I have this in four colors right now. I think a mustard, a pink, oops, um, a green, and a, probably a blue. Yeah, and a blue. <laughs> I can't really hold it. It's, it's hard to get it to where it's in focus. And then I have another one here, but this one printed out a little too small for my liking. In person, it's fine. But I think, look at that, how small that is. I'm gonna make this bigger. So I was all excited to use my new fabric and this one's a like a gray grayed out one. <laughs> so um, I wanted the excuse. I was like, oh, I'm gonna use my new fabric. My strike off just arrived. And then I was like, dang it, there's no pocket lining. So I'm gonna make some, so. I'm going to Martina. I actually have, um, so what I do with my videos is I have a little book and I write the video and then I plan it. 
I know it probably doesn't seem like it in some of those videos where I'm just talking, <laughs> but I plan it and I need, and that's what sparked it. Cause I was, I was planning my video for comparing jeans patterns. And I was like, what would I want to know about these different jeans? And I was like, you know, I've only sewn eight pairs and one of them is men's. So they've only sewn seven pairs of women's. That's probably a lot for most people, but there's so many different jeans patterns out there. So I thought it would be a good launching point. And then I it kind of like threw me into that rabbit hole of finding other jean patterns and kind of knowing. So maybe the next time I'll do another seven or something like that. So I am um, I am working on that, Martina. It'll probably be one of the, in the, in the next like five videos I have. I have two coming out. I have one coming out today on the, in the design and manufacturing series, which I know a lot of you probably aren't like, eh, that's for those folks. But uh, I still need to finish that just for my own peace of mind. And I have at least three more episodes, maybe four. I have recorded two, I'm editing the second one right now. And I have a third that I'll record probably today or tomorrow. Um, and then I'm gonna see what my last one will be. So anyway, you're wearing your myosotis as well. It's the fabrics for the pockets, Sharon, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome, Charlie. Good evening, good evening. Hey, Sydney, how's it going? <laughs> Hey, Terry, Eliza. Thanks, Hannah. And on the other hand, there's two Hannahs. H. Crow is Hannah as well. Hello, hello, hello. Nice seeing ya. All right, so like I said, I'm going to add side seam pockets so I can have a, a, a pocket lining. Hey, Libby, how's it going? My neighbor, <laughs> how's it going? And I'm gonna think I'm gonna do it the way I did this Maya Soda dress. So I don't know if you can see. I have shorts on, so it's okay. But my dress, can you see right here? I have a cutaway pocket. So this right here is my side seam. And then I have this cutaway. It makes finding your pocket a lot easier. And then my pocket is actually stitched down around the dress, which I really like. So I might do that on there uh, because then your pocket bags stay to the front, which I really like. So, oh, nice, Malin. I thought you'd watched that one before. Sunny but chilly from the Scottish borders. Oh, you're getting so poetic. I love it. Yes, yes, Derek. Yeah, I'm working on that. So I just put a call out. I think you actually answered, you answered that because I put a call out on Instagram on a post in my stories and then um, on uh, YouTube has that community page. So if you're ever on your phone, you're scrolling through and you see like a static post by someone and you're like, oh weird, it's like an Instagram post. I did one of those and I'm looking for any, um, and don't tell me in the chat because I don't rewatch this chat, but if you guys want, please tell me any jean patterns that I haven't sewn because I am interested. And it's nice hearing, even if you're like, oh, someone else mentioned that, it's nice hearing what you say and suggest because then I know what patterns people are looking at the most so I can put my efforts in the right direction. Oh, right, oh, Malin, that's good. I actually kind of figured that because the, I was wondering too, I was like, is the is the scoop too low? So I actually pinned these together in paper and kind of put them up to me. And I was like, no, the scoop's not too low, but there is a lot of shaping there. And I think that's why is because it kind of skims the body and because it comes in here at that hip and there's even a dart for shaping there, that it would kind of create a lot of bulk over your hip bone. So I could totally see that. And I think, yeah, a cutaway might help. It's sunny and chilly here too, but it was like, 77 over the weekend, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> so you're getting rain and snow in Utah. Oh my goodness. Okay, Allison, you know what? Um, you're not crazy. I think I actually had to stream because I scheduled it yesterday and I couldn't figure out how to go live from that scheduled stream. It used to always work and now it just doesn't. So I thought I'd try it again but on your phone it's working. Yeah, because there's two. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I actually said at the beginning, I was like, so did that look weird? Because, well, I won't go into all the details, but yeah, I'm glad you found us. I don't know, maybe I can delete the other one. Let's see, I don't know. I might be able to do that, let's see here. 
I'm gonna have to open it up in a third tab. I'll get rid of that. I'm so worried I'm gonna delete what I'm that I'm streaming. <laughs> okay, I delete that. Hopefully that works. I don't know. The this the this control room software YouTube has is honestly it's so confusing. I really don't get it. I really don't get it. You know? Okay. So, like I said, I'm going to be adding side seam pockets. I'm actually going back to the way I always look at you guys. Except I wish you guys were in color. I really miss you guys being in different colors. Because then I could see, um, like, if you reply to your own comment or whatever, I can look for your lime green name to say, oh, that's where they said that, you know. This week, Thread Theory seemed to have taken on board the men's patterns from two amazing French... Oh, what do you mean by that? You finished your Otis. Which one's the Otis, Mullen? Otis overalls. <laughs> I, I heard of those. Who made those? Who made the Otis? There's so many overalls now. The reason I went for the Helen's Closet, I'll tell you, because there's a lot of overall patterns out there. I've made the Burnside bibs, but I kind of modified those. Um... And I don't think the Burnside bibs is really great for my body type. So that's kind of why I modified those. The reason I picked the Yantas was I really love the back view. I That's my favorite kind of overall back view. Oh, okay, Serena. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, there was something up with it. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have... I actually looked at the tutorial and I was like, this doesn't make any sense either. So I... This was a while ago. I'll look again. It'd be real. Do you guys like the scheduling? Because I actually looked for that in several places to see where does it say I'm scheduled and I couldn't find it. And I think it's because I'm the video owner. Hi, Adina. How's it going? Oh, so liberated Otis. Okay. Yeah, that's cute. Those are cute. Nice. Okay. So I'm making some side seam pockets. And I'm going to do a cutaway style, which really means... I technically only need a bottom pocket, the one that my hand, the palm of my hand is gonna touch because I can use the top of the, I can use the overall itself as the top layer of the pocket, but say you're using a fabric that that's not that great or really thin fabric, you can line it as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Or you can just do a facing for the opening. Like this one here, let's see, what did I do here? So this, on this pocket here, I only bind, bound the edge on the inside of the pocket opening. So it only has a bottom layer of the pocket. So essentially I've only added one layer to this pocket so it, the dress kind of still flows. You can't even see these pockets. It's, they're pretty um, hidden. So, and I'm gonna kind of try and keep them close to that top edge here because I'm not quite sure about the, the um, distance so all right um, this is I have a lot of extra paper because I printed out my pattern it with layers so I only needed to print out my size and I'm only doing the short so I had like the below leg extra paper so yeah wardrobe by me is definitely a company I'm looking at for menswear but I couldn't find jeans on there at all I looked like three times. I even looked from different ways because I was like, well, maybe it's just the way it's filters, but they don't have any men's wear jeans. They have pants, but not jeans. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna trace off my pattern and this is the, like a, a needle point tracing wheel. And so what I do is just trace it on to the paper below. I'm gonna put that dart there, but I'm not gonna put it in my pocket. I don't think I'm going to. We'll put the green line on here. And I'll use a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna draw on those little punctures. And 
and then here's my green line. I always keep about I keep a little like pocket template hanging around here and look at this one. This one actually looks like maybe this is the one I used for the myosotis. Yeah, it actually could be. And look at that. I actually wrote, you know, I need a five and a quarter inch opening here. And I think this, I'm not sure what this means. Oh, maybe this is eight. Yeah, that would make sense. About eight. Yep. And then right here, seven and a half by ten and a half. You know what? I'll bet I wrote these things on there for you guys. <laughs> That's why they're there. I'm like, wait, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> So this little template, yeah. So if you want to look at some of these measurements, if you're kind of making your own, I have a five and a quarter of an inch opening because right, you need it to be wide enough for your hand. You can see this right here is my opening. Those red notches. I put about an inch and a quarter above and an inch and a half below right here. I have right angles going to the seam. My nose is itchy. It's the allergies are terrible here. This right here measures about seven and a half. This right here measures about eight. If you measured from here to here straight, that's 10 and a half. So, but I would use logic. Can I get my hand into this pocket? how deep I want it. Bigger is not better. Bigger is not better because you don't really want your pockets sitting on your thighs with stuff on them in them when you're sitting at the table. It's really awkward. It feels really weird. I have Eliza. Yeah, I've made those. That's the only pair of men's jeans I've uh, made so far. And I think I'd like to make the Fulford jeans by Thread Theory. Those look like the most vanilla standard men's jean she has. I didn't opt for the quadras at the time because they're made to be a little roomy for like working, like a lot of movement. My husband is a very, you know, slight guy. So I don't want roomy and those Jutlands, they are really nice. They look really great. But he's just like the back is pretty baggy on him. So I would probably take a lot out of him. That's why I think the Fulford would be a good option for him. But um, yeah, so my husband's not like average or standard size sizes for guys. I'm bigger than my husband. Yeah, the grind bib shorts, but she's round. I'm not sure if the arms are. I think they could. Yeah, I think they could accentuate that. I think I kind of like, I like, kind of think it's kind of cute, but I know what you mean. There might be something else that works if you want something that elongates or something. What does she want? That's what I would think, say, you know, maybe see what she's looking for. All right, so I'm going to use this little pocket thing. And so there's five eighths inch seams on this overall pattern. So we'll just draw these in here so we don't lose sight of the fact that our pocket can't start at the top edge there because we need that to finish, right? Um, I can draw a 5 8 inch line, right? <laughs> so if we have 5 eighths on this too, I don't. I probably have like half inch seams on this. We're looking at something like that. So maybe I should have made my paper. I was picturing putting my pattern on the fold you know, like a jeans pocket when I originally decided to do a side seam pocket, but then I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, I think I kind of want this to be stitched down so that my pocket doesn't move. And then Mullen brought up such a great point about the bulk. Ash jeans. You mean by um, Megan Nielsen? I have made those. I should have them try mine on, but mine are really curvy. Melinda. How's it going? Quadra. Quadra Melinda by uh, Thread Theory. She specializes in men's clothing. Well, she doesn't specialize it, but she has some specialized patterns for in men's wear that is designed for someone who is working out in the yard or working out in the garage. Um, 
which is having those kinds of uh, things in mind. I'm trying to read chat and talk, and it's just a bad, bad combo. <laughs> Yeah, I think those full fords are going to be slimmer fit. Yeah. And that would be good for him. He's never been the type of guy that likes to wear really big and baggy things, you know. And I've talked to a lot of guys over the year about sizing. Imagine that. <laughs> but, you know, when you work, like I worked in the outdoor industry. And so they always had a lot of um, opinions about fitting and you know we were always fighting to add women's sizing everyone's fighting now for curvy sizing back then we were fighting for women's sizes at all it was a struggle you guys and the thing that ended up making this company and this company actually was more sensitive and uh, more interested in adding it even though they were small and you know justifying it for sales was pretty tough all of us were like you're gonna get more sales if you add it right but they didn't were there's like oh, that's kind of a risk you know so um but the thing that ended up tipping the balance for us besides the fact that our sales did increase adding women's sizes women's specific sizes and styles for certain things was that we had a pfd a um a life jacket for women that had princess seams on it and it fit really good. It won all these awards. And men started buying it too because a lot of paddlers have a lot of upper body uh, muscle and bulk. And they found that the women's pattern fit them better because they were tapered here and busty. And so then guys started, there were two things. There was that. They, they started, because there were so many people buying it, um, the life jacket itself had kind of a, a title that, none of us really liked called the mid because they were all of the pfds had fit in the title so there was like the side fit the um i don't remember all of them but the women's was the ms fit you know and so haha ha, it's really funny but then eventually a lot of women were just like you know what we're this is offensive <laughs> and i think it's still called that but um guys wanted us to change the name mainly because they were like but we're buying it too we were like uh you know what welcome to our world we only buy menswear to do outdoor sports <laughs> so no we're not changing the women's specific pattern to a man's name or a neutral name just because um you don't like buying something with that name no one knows you know so i don't like that kind of thinking i feel like there it should have just been neutral to begin with Anyone can wear it that they want if it fits good, right? That's just what's important. And that's what we learned. It was a really good lesson that, you know, and, and a demonstration of it. The other thing that we did to um, really catapult women getting more sizes and styles at the company was me and the designer decided, me and the other designer, there were two of us. She had more seniority than I did. Um, but she always made me kind of like, do the little things sometimes, you know, like, yeah, you just, you go do that, Jeremy. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, you know, like I'm the one, I'm the, I had to do the things, you know. But one of the things that we came up with together finally, because we were just desperate, was making the guys, all the guys there, try on women's clothing. And that drove our point home so well because they were like, I can't wear that, it doesn't fit over my leg or this or whatever we were like exactly they're like but that's different you can just buy a bigger size and we're like then buy a bigger size try a bigger size then of the women's wear we have all these for you to try and that finally made it click for them that that's what we had been doing all that time was just wearing a larger size and then it's it's unsafe when you're doing some of these sports if your clothing doesn't fit you very well. And so women were having their sleeves shortened, but they were still really bulky through here and same with the legs. And so they finally realized, okay, we need at least one woman's style in the dry suits and one woman's style thing, and then it grew, so. <laughs> really, Mrs. Necro, that's great. 
All right, I'm sorry. Okay, I just traced off my shape there so you can see that it didn't really line up to the side seam here. See, that's kind of, cur the this side seam is curved, so that's great. Um, let's draw in, I feel like, I feel like this curve actually needs to be a little bigger. What did I decide last time, you guys? I feel like this, let's see how this one feels. Start with what you know. Five. So this one that I'm wearing looks like this. This right here is five inches, the opening going from here to here. Right here. And then the depth of the pocket from here to here is one inch. This is finished, by the way. So the dress I'm wearing right now has one of these cutaway pockets that I made and I added to the myosotis. And so this is where my hand goes in to this little curve right here. And so that amount is good to know. So if we wanted to really see if we're gonna get that, you don't want it to be smaller than this. I have one um, of uh, one garment where I have these cutaway pockets. And I swear the opening is a quarter of an inch smaller and it's hard. So, hello, Summer. <laughs> have a good one, Summer. Thanks for saying hi. That sounds like a cozy afternoon. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. I am going to lose about five eighths there, but my pocket, I'll just probably sew it with a half inch. Or maybe let's just add an eighth of an inch seam allowance so that I can do French seams. Cause I really, no, I don't need to do French seams. I don't need to do French seams. I just need to overlock the edge and top stitch it down. Okay, we're doing a cutaway pocket. Cutaway pocket, Jeremy. We have all this fabric here. So let's, I'm gonna make my opening a little bit bigger at the top here, about a quarter of an inch bigger. I'm gonna make my opening five and a half inches and I'm gonna go from the bottom notch and raise this one up here. Five and a half inch opening and this is the notch I want on my pocket. And this edge here, I'm just going to probably overlock or turn under and top stitch down so maybe I'm losing a quarter of an inch there, all right? So then if we're losing a quarter of an inch along this edge here, Here's my finished pocket right there. So let's see here. Let's make this one inch. Because when you start doing this curve, what you learn is, wait a minute here, you need that notch at the finished seam, right? So you see, this right here is my finished opening. So I moved it to my seam line here. So I know I my curve ends up hitting those two points. It's really easy to make this too small. All right, so here's my opening. I moved it to the seam line there. I only have a quarter of an inch seam here, five eighths along the side seam here. And I, I put my curve an inch away right here. This is an inch away from the side seam. This is my finished line. I haven't added seam allowance yet, all right? And so you can see, look at it's getting kind of narrow over here and that is totally fine. We're gonna add seam allowance to this edge anyway. But as long as my curve here hits this opening on that seam line, it's five and a half. I want five and a half inches and you have this depth. You need this kind of depth to be able to get in there. You could do a little less. You can even do it flush with the seam. That's fine too. There's lots of ways to do this. This is just a, I like the curve. I like those organic shapes. All right, so that's what we have. And so I think I'm gonna add like a 3 8 inch seam allowance to this edge now. Okay. So let's look at this.
Do we still need to make, make this cutaway on our overalls as well? Ah, <laughs> thank you, Summer. Thank you. That's very nice. Why don't? Why isn't the sound? Is it not making sound again? <gasps> no. Oh, I have my sound off. I want to hear it again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> this week in your natural disaster class is wildflowers. Ugh! Wow. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Necro, wait, with... So now focus has shift so much men's health is being left on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's really interesting because um, I read this book. Maybe I should finish this first and then I'll tell you. But um, about something like that it was kind of interesting. It did for you. Yeah, sorry, Dar. I forgot. I had my, what I do is I turn off the sound on my computer when I'm recording videos. I also turn off alerts sometimes because it's really funny. Like I'll be recording a video and all of a sudden I'll get an alert. Like, so-and-so have just subscribed to you, and that gets recorded in the video. So it'll ruin the whole video, and it's terrible because I feel bad that I'm like, no, I got a subscriber. Wait, I'm happy about that. <laughs> so I turn off the alerts. Yeah, this is Necro. Sounds intense. Okay, so we have this curve here, and I'm just going to cut off the extra. Because now this is my cut pattern piece. I don't need those notches because the curve dictates this. I don't, it was just my way of showing you how my pocket opening depth. Okay. So now this curve, we're going to, I kind of lost the where, where this was on this pattern though, huh? Don't lose where you're putting it on the pattern. Let's see here. I had that. I had this. Okay, this is where this is where I'm placing my pattern. Okay, so then line up your pocket on there. And then we're going to draw on this curve that I just totally moved my whole pattern piece when I did that, didn't I? And you know, honestly, you could actually leave. Oh, I'm just realizing something. This is I'm drawing. This is the top pocket. So if you're going to line the this opening with the whole pocket piece, this is the piece you'll need. We don't really need that for what we're doing. This cutaway is going to be exactly the same because they sew together. All right. And we're going to um, cut that away in just a second, but I need to make my bottom pocket pattern piece because that's all I'm going to cut out. I'm so used to drafting both of these and focusing on the curve first. So we're gonna cut that out. All right, so now let's make our pocket here. And we'll just, because we need this little piece here on the under pocket. Just give ourselves a little bit of reference here. I'm just going to trace that on there. There we go. And I'll just cut these out at the same time. That way I have my pieces identical. I'm gonna make this a little clearer in just a second what I have here. All right, so if my Yantas were sewn and my pocket was there I would sew this piece to my Yantas right and then I would you know sew it right sides together 
turn it to the inside, and now I have a nice clean edge right here. And then I can lay this one under here, top stitch around the perimeter of the pocket to, um, you know, get it on there and secure it. And then now I have my side seam there as well. You can just top stitch <clears throat> or edge or stitch in the seam allowance above and below, and then everything is ready to go and you can treat your yantas as you're going forward. So now the other thing you do if you want to do less bulk, since I'm doing denim, I'm kind of about the less bulk idea. You don't need this piece right here as long as you face this edge, like put a facing on it or bind it. The other thing you need to remember is that this piece right here is going to show to the world. So if you're not using denim, which you could, you could just use whatever fabric is here, you're going to need a facing that's sewn onto the under pocket. Just like when you do um, jeans, and there's always that little rounded denim piece right there with your palm. So, so I really want to use my pocket lining um, that I made. I, so this is purely like a little extra that I'm doing this, right? So. But as far as this facing goes, there's a few ways to go about it. I'm going to draw in the circle, the curve, so you can see it. So now you just need your facing to make sh to be able to, um, you know, look as if the fabric is seamless, right? Ugh, I am terrible at talking lately. You just need to cover up this window, right? So what you could do, you could just do a straight piece, a straight pattern piece like this as you're facing. Be the easiest thing to sew that way, you know? Yeah, definitely, Eliza, we could do that. Yeah, I could do that for you. Let me clean it up a little bit. I did that with the welt pocket. <laughs> That'd be a fun one. Let me write that down. I'll do that. Um, all right, so you could do a facing here. You could do a facing that's just parallel to this curve like this. That's a little extra work. Um, you know, you could make this in two pattern pieces so that you sew this piece to your lining, you know, along this edge here. There's a lot of ways you could do it. And um, the having those kinds of options is great if you're kind of getting low on fabric or maybe you have a, your, your overalls are stripe and you're like, oh my gosh, I really need my stripe to match. So, or maybe you do, con you know, you do the stripes a different direction, something like that, or you do a contrast fabric. There's a lot of opportunities with these cutaway uh, pockets. There's not really any rule. It just depends on what you want. So just remember that you really only need this piece here. If you cut it in your outer fabric, then it'll look like it's not even there. And you could just bind this edge here and that's the least amount of fabric, as long as that's what you want, as far as layers go. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll probably do a facing, just a straight one right there. I'm gonna do binding along that edge. The binding could show, so you gotta be careful about that too. You could also do a facing along this edge. So same thing, you could cut a piece, maybe one and three quarters of an inch parallel to this line here. You can overlock that edge, top stitch it down once it's sewn on there. You can turn it under and clean finish it. Uh, no one's going to see this. It's only finishing this edge. There's lots of ways to go about that. So ask if you want any demonstrations. So, all right. So let's see. I'm going to do a facing. I'm just going to do a simple one. Shopping in my recycling bin. See if I can get it into this piece right here. So what I think I'll do is, this is what I thought I had, trace this off. And would I be more accurate if this was for someone else? Absolutely. <laughs> and then, um, Let's see, we'll probably just do this just a straight two inches. Okay. 
Mm, we need to make sure that we get past this line. So we need to do more of that. So if this seam allowance here is say three eighths, what it, that's what it was, right? Three eighths. So really we need to get past this curve here. So two inches is a little skint. We want a little bit more. So let's do about two and a half. Sorry, I didn't plan this out better. I didn't, I didn't plan this until like right before I went live. And when your facing does this kind of thing where it starts going into these like narrow areas, it's up to you if you want to like round it and not go get this little point here that I'm getting. I'm just going to go with it. We'll just tape a little piece of paper there. It's not a big deal and it'll probably be less bulk if I just kind of go with it. I'm a messy pattern drafter, I know. All right. I'm going for the least amount of bulk in these pockets. And that's the way I'm going to sew them too. Mainly because I'm using a pretty heavyweight denim. All right. I'm going to go put this on my desk. That way I remember. And then on this piece here, we're going to just leave it. I'm just gonna top stitch this right on top. But I, what I could do is make it a seam right here. But I, I made this so that I'm gonna overlock this edge, lay it on top of this pattern piece, top stitch it down, and then lay it behind like that. And so, you know, this is my denim. This is my denim, right? This is my um, pattern, I mean my fabric. It has pockets, right? So you kind of get a visual. And then that's what you'll see when I'm wearing them, right? So, like this. You do need a notch. Let's put a notch here to line up our where so we know where to sew this pocket onto um, here because we won't have a curve there. So let's do that. Like that. And all I did was line up those edges there. You can do it with on the seam line or on the raw edge. Doesn't matter. All right, we're ready to cut. <laughs> we're ready finally. I'm a chronic putter aware. That's how I manage having a small space. <laughs> So I still don't know really how I'm gonna incorporate these. Oh, and then I'm gonna use these buckles. So the person that was asking about that um, buttons, it was it that the button and buttonhole was tough for their kiddos' hands. This could be an option. I don't know, this is, this is kind of narrow right here, but it is really easy to do because you just push it in, right? And then undoing it, you know, you push the side. So I would definitely test if you buy something like this. Some of these can be really stiff, especially those ones that aren't very good quality. All right, let me put this right here. We got the fabric. A little dark. Very wide. You want me to fold it the other way so it's not so dark? The lighting is so weird over here. Can you see the texture? Like a snowsuit for kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is true, the bibs. Yeah, snow bibs.
I think after being in the outdoor world, I, I get like, I, for a while, like I could only think in terms of using that kind of hardware for all my stuff. And now I'm kind of like, I don't want it to look like it's outdoorsy. <laughs> I'm kind of like on the opposite. This fabric is so wide. I can almost get both of my overalls across. And I probably could do this even. That's crazy. I want to stay away from this edge was really wrinkly. Can you even see that? Yee. <laughs> yes, no bibs. That'd be pretty funny. I have enough fabric, so. My table's just not wide enough. I miss having my big table here. Not that it was different for the stream though. It's getting hung up back there. So what are you guys working on? You know what we need to start thinking about if we're going to think about it at all is um, Me Made May. Are we doing anything for that? <laughs> and I think I keep saying I'm making the Dawn jeans next week and I'm not. I'm making the Texas top by Personal Clothing for Hearts Fabric. And then the week after that, I'm making the Dawn jeans. All right, so I'm just making sure in parallel because I don't really want any torquing, even on overalls. I cut a little chunk out of this. <laughs> I think that was my grand attempt at, I was like, oh, I'm gonna start keeping track of all my fabrics. So, <laughs> I, love, I don't live in a snowy area, is it obvious? <laughs> I can get my facing. So I'm not going to be doing these front pockets because I replaced them with the pocket I drafted. So we're going to put that in the bin so I don't accidentally do that. Um, I guess I could do my back facing in my It Has Pockets fabric. <laughs> it would be a good, uh, oh, there's a front facing too. Wait, there's a front facing? I don't know how I feel about that. Interesting. Hi Karen, how's it going? You're cutting fabric out. The M6044 button up shirt, plateau joggers. Those are the closet core ones, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Gilbert top. Oh cool, Malin. I haven't made that. Your quilt coat, nice. Nice, Melinda. Nice, Derek, that's cool. Do you make themed ones or different different colors? Oh, a Saraste shirt. I haven't made that either. There's so many things in the Ardens. They were too big. No, I'm sorry, Maddie. Can you make them smaller? I don't know the Maddie pants off the top of my head. The facing is for the bib, yeah. But I know, but can't I just do a little facing up here and binding on the armhole? <laughs> You know what I, why I don't want the facing is I'm expecting this edge right here to get crumpled when I'm wearing it if it's not stitched down. It's not, right? Oops, I just pressed my keyboard. I'm getting the picture. So the bib, I mean, oh, the pocket probably is stitched through. I have to see. <clears throat> oh right there's an optional zipper side zipper I should actually probably check that all right so you just overlock the facing and it hangs down mm. Hmm. It's UFO week. I don't know what's in that bag. <laughs> uh oh. 
A new blanket and pillow for traveling. Ooh, the Webster. I don't have that one. <laughs> That's awesome, Derek. Ooh, full committee top stitching. Ooh, I feel that pain. I've been there for sure. Linen Helen's got you. Oh, nice, Eliza. It's not stitched down at the bottom, just the sides. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Does yours rumple up? I think what I would do is I would probably just bind this edge and make a facing across the top and that's it. We down for that? <laughs> and I would do it in denim. I would do it in the same fabric. And then the back, I think I would do the same thing. Bind that armhole first and then just do a little facing there. My phone is going crazy right now. I don't know why. That is one good thing about streaming is that it's almost like you check out from the world. Isn't that weird? It's kind of like a weird ironic thing about when I'm streaming, yeah, something big happens, I probably wouldn't know. I mean, remember that time Loki got stung by the bee and my my husband and daughter were texting and calling and texting. I was like, okay, I got to figure this out. We all were like, what's going on? <laughs> he was stung by a bee and going to the emergency bed. <laughs> okay, so I think I can get this pattern piece here and then I just need this one, this, this, this. Okay. I'm just kind of looking at my pattern pieces to see could I fit some other stuff into these spots, but there's really not much. I'm not going to be like crazy not using the fabric somehow, you know? So let's go for it. I can't really see my dart there. It overlaps. Set that aside for my pocket facing. Go out for that little short hem flare. Oops, that wasn't very straight. I didn't do any, uh, I didn't do any like measurements. I, I don't know about the length or anything. And uh, to be crystal clear, I actually figured out my sizing when I and I printed out the PDF like a few weeks ago. I don't even, I'm not even sure what size I'm printing right now. Let's see. It looks like I'm printing out the 14. So I'm kind of smack dab in the middle of the sizing. This does go up to a size 30. And that means Yeah, right, Libby? I think so, too. Uh, so the size chart goes up to... I'm looking for inches. Oh, here we go. 54-inch high bust, 56-inch full bust, 58-inch hip, and down to a 31-inch bust and 33-inch hip. All right, we got this completely out, right? Nope, not the curve yet. So glad I just checked. I need three pins to mark my dart. If you're doing the front patch pockets, don't forget to put the markings on where they are. And also for the bib up here, there's a little chest pocket marking and it your for your size, it could have snuck under the piece of paper if you're doing the PDF printout. So make sure you don't miss it. 
I think I've been, always been so resistant to printing and taping PDFs together, but I will say this. It's such a good opportunity to start looking at the pattern, especially for someone like me who's going to be like sewing it on a camera and you know, I don't really um, prep myself too much for it. I try and do it kind of blind. It is kind of a nice to kind of see, oh, okay, what's going on with this pattern, you know? It's like a cheat sheet. I kind of get the hang of what's going on before I even get to the cutting and sewing. I can start thinking about it. Yeah, I did. Welcome, Maddie, welcome. Yeah, so this is, so when I printed this out, I used this the layers feature because some PDF patterns and I print this on my home printer. Sometimes I have them at the copy shop, but this time I did the printer. Some of them have this layers feature on the left-hand side when you're in Adobe and you can click off all the sizes you don't want to print out. Um, if I'm between a couple sizes, I'll print out all the ones I want. And it's great because it makes it so much easier to cut it out. And so then I, this is my cut line right here. And I just cut off all the extra paper. If you saw me actually cut printing, and taping together a PDF, it would probably stress you out a little bit because I don't do the whole thing. I do it, I start along the first row, I go to the next row, but when I start seeing, like especially with this one, the way this one prints out is that this little tiny thing is on one page. There's probably lots of other sizes. And then there's nothing, you know, for over, I think way over here for the next pattern piece, right? And so I just don't even tape that blank piece there. And then when I start seeing kind of a trend, like, okay, these three right here, this is this pattern piece. I just start looking for the 4E and the 4D and or whatever it is, F. And then I start just taping the pattern pieces together. It's a little bit like sometimes you gotta be pay attention for sure. But that way I, um, I don't have like this huge thing of paper that I'm taping together. I just tape what I want. And then, yeah, I rough cut around it and then I just cut the rest off on my table. Sometimes I cut more off <clears throat> though, or I cut on the lining on the line because I want to be able to see where I'm positioning the pattern piece on the fabric. So it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Cause sometimes I can't see, I'm like, I'm cutting it so close with my fabric that I really need to cut out, cut it out on the line so that I can see how close I can get, <laughs> you know? So it just depends. I know I'm missing a lot of chat. Sorry guys. I think the pinafore is kind of a cute way to do a, overall thing. I like the pinafore. You do too, Martina? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you know, if you use scissors and pins, you, you know, it'd probably be a different, maybe a different set of steps. I prefer almost always using weights and a rotary knife. I find it to be a little faster and um, I'm just, I'm really good at using scissors, but not really with cutting fabric anymore. And I don't keep my scissors up for that kind of cutting. I keep my pattern scissors sharp. <laughs> you know, those really crazy scissors I have, but that's about it. And it's also really awkward to cut under a camera because I can't just ha like lean over it. So it probably looks pretty bad on your end. Here's one of these little inverted corners. There we go. This fabric is a little bit rumply. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of rumply and I had to, I had to iron it a little bit. Denim. <laughs> All right, these are the back pockets. I'm gonna mark those. Yeah, right, Elena, I totally agree. You know what else I really like when they say things like, 
if you're doing view B, you only need to print out these pages. You know what I mean? Because I just did a pattern recently for you guys. And I meant to mention, oh, by the way, this one doesn't tell you that. So you might want to look. <laughs> oh, do you, Malin? Yeah, see, I think like it just depends on what you're comfortable with. And I think there's all of it's fine. Sometimes I just like the kind of meditative quality about it too, you know? None of us liked tissue except for this right here. We liked tissue for that part, huh? So for the back pockets, I want my markings to be on the right side of the fabric. But for my dart, I want it to be <clears throat> on the wrong side of the fabric. I lost this one over here. Okay. And I just put my, wherever my pin goes in, is where the marking is. I know that. Like, like that's what I tell myself. Everyone has their own way. Could do chalk or markers. I don't think I notched my dart yet, right? Okay, let's get this back on here. So I didn't iron the whole piece of denim because like this, you probably just can't see it, but it's pretty, um, maybe you can kind of see the texture on the back. It's a little rumply. I didn't iron it all because it's like that whole thing we were talking about the other day where someone asked you iron all your fabric perfectly. And I don't because do I plan on ironing these overalls to go gardening? Nope. So I really want the fabric to be exactly how it's going to be when I'm wearing them. I don't think I need this pattern piece with it, but I'm just going to keep it. I don't know. Oh, fun, Beverly. Beverly, thanks for those emails. Thank you. I appreciate that. I haven't been able to reply. I, the channel's really been growing a lot and there's been lots of uh, more people and engagement which has been really awesome um but i'm also getting messages from <laughs> like lots of different fronts so i'm trying to keep up with youtube comments facebook comments instagram comments and instagram dms right now and email <laughs> So I know Ray emailed me. She's probably here watching. Um, I haven't replied to you, Ray, I know. <laughs> so I'm working on it. And, um, and to be completely transparent, I actually injured my back last Friday and I almost didn't stream on Saturday. So I just had a muscle spasm doing something really dumb. And so, and my back does this occasionally, like, like once a year. And it's, it's just something I have to kind of get through fine standing here but I usually what I do is that's when in the morning sitting in bed drinking coffee is when I go through all my email all my stuff <laughs> and I haven't been able to do that because I can't sit in my bed <laughs> so it's kind of thrown me off in my routine weirdly like of course I could do that at any time of the day I know but it just like, throws me off my routine I go about my routine for the day and at the end of the day I'm like oh I never looked at my email <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yes, Beverly, but it's largely in part to folks like you who have always been thinking about the success of my stream. And I really appreciate that. I'm always going to reply to you. So <laughs> thanks, Adina. Thank you. I've actually, there's been a lot of, of action in Facebook lately, and I'm really enjoying that. I'm loving those conversations we're having on like that buttonhole attachment that you got and the coat making we're going to be doing. Anyone's welcome in our Facebook group. It's super low key <laughs> um, and you just ask to be a part of it on the page and I'll accept you. I've been pretty good about accepting those regularly. 
neat. And the Ikea flannel bed. Oh, the Ikea fabrics are so good. All right, I need to pay attention to it. Let's see, let's see. All right, so we have this strap. You cut two in fabric and cut two in interfacing. That's probably something I'm gonna have to taper a little bit more for the buckle I'm using, but that's fine. All right, we have these two pieces, which are lining. We have a chest pocket, your back pockets, and your front pockets if you're not doing the um, cutaway pocket, which you probably aren't. So don't forget those. Oh, I have a lot over there, room there. Need two of those, two of those, two of those. All right, we got all this around, and we have that fabric for that. Okay, we're Gucci. Yeah, you could. I'm not either, Mrs. Necro. If you looked at my profile, I have zero friends. <laughs> I finally just had to let that go. I'm hoping, like, I was hardly active on there, and I'm really hoping that the friends I had weren't like, wow, she just unfriended me, because I unfriended everybody. And I did that just because I can't keep up with it, and I felt like if I'm not engaging, I just don't want people to expect me to be engaging, you know? Yeah, Terry, you've gotten yours going, right? <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> wow, it'd be like that sometimes, huh? So I'm trying to avoid this crease in the fabric right here. Can you maybe see that? Some of these creases, like, I don't know enough about denim to understand what that means, but I know that that crease will forever and always be in this, this, if I put that in pants, it'd be there forever. It's even faded on this side, which you probably can't see, but let's see if I have one that you can see it on. I think you know what I mean. If you've ever cut denim, but oh, can you even see that? You can't see that, it's too dark, sorry. <laughs> Well, this is, I've never done what she's doing and, and I'm, I'm actually very uh, invested in the success of what Adina is doing because she got a buttonhole attachment for her industrial machine and both of our industrial machines don't do a zigzag stitch. So what it does is it moves the fabric around and does the zigzag. I didn't know I could, I can't do this. Both my hands do different things, but, um, Hey, Ray, how's it going? <laughs> I wa that would have been crazy, Ray. I was really glad that I interviewed during the move. That was kind of crazy. <laughs> so I am very invested in like what she's doing because I want it to work for her so that I can get one too. And she knows it. <laughs> I think she knows that I'm like, how's that going? But I, I had seen someone say they couldn't get it to work with their machine with thread snip. And I don't know why that would be, because I don't understand that kind of thing very well. Like I say, I know how to use my machine really well for what I do with it. Could I be exploring other, oh, I just cut two of these. Last I checked, I only have one chest. You only have one chest too. So you only really need to cut one of these. So save yourself some fabric or make two pairs. Is it a pair of overalls or a set of overalls? So let's just pick the nice one. This one has a wrinkle in it, so we'll keep this one. Oh, that fell in the crack of no return. Oh well, no more chest pocket. <laughs> Good thing I cut two. <clears throat> All right, I still have room for that. Okay. I sort of want to uh, line my pockets with my fabric. Oh, that wasn't very straight, was it? Oh, 
I've been narrowing down my uh, serger and cover stitch. I got some really great feedback from a couple of you, which I'm pretty pleased about. Does anyone have the Juki 1000? I know that's quite a bit of a step above that. I think it's 654D. What's, is there ones in between? I was just thinking because that 654 looks really good. Like it's really good reviews and it looks really trusty, um, which I like the idea of. <clears throat> I just want it to be fast to thread on camera. The thread sub, oh, it's not, that's not the issue. Okay, so you're just working on configuring it. You know who I saw has a video, Adina? Um, I think it's Muna and Broad, Adina. Um, <laughs> Muna and Broad, or it's Layla Sews, has a, a YouTube video on how to attach that, or yeah. Check it out. If you can't find it, let me know and I will message her because I it, it was suggested to me after I was shopping that buttonhole attachment so much. And that's where I saw someone say, this didn't work with my thread snip, so if that's not your problem. Yeah, so check that out. If you can't find the video, I could probably find it. I probably liked it so that it'll be saved in my history. You can get a walking foot machine, but you can't, you don't get a walking foot attachment. Hmm, I hope not. I saw they have a new mama, little kittens. <laughs> Setting it up was so easy. Ooh. Okay. This is one that would be kind of hard to see if you had it on grain, you know? This pattern piece. In fact, we're going to do this. Get it closer. Okay. harder to cut straight with this uh, using printer paper as pattern pieces. Do you guys know what I mean? It's just so thick, you know? I feel like it's harder to stay on tr track or like if you're not on track to begin with, it's hard to get back on track. It's getting a little messy over here. I can't bend down these days. <laughs> Oh, Abby Den. Okay. Oh, they do. Well, their industrial surgers are, I mean, oh, they're so quiet and they just go tick, 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 tick. Oh my gosh. It's the most satisfying machine noise you've ever heard in your life. Um, this, so this little piece here, like I did, really didn't leave myself some options to determine my grain line. I know that that piece was cut at a little bit of an angle. I can see my grain line, but at the same time, remember that this piece, like if you were putting something, uh, one of these cutaway pockets on a side seam that was more slanted, you might want to make sure your grain line on this piece is the same as the grain line on the garment that you're sewing it to. So just note that. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good thought, Ray. The high shank. Yeah, okay. I'll, Abby Den. I don't think I've heard of that one, of her. So I'll check her out, Beverly.
And then I, I think I might get a Genome cover stitch. I've never owned a Genome, so I'm a little nervous about that, but I know a lot of people who have them. Just chipping away at cutting this out. <laughs> I'm just like doing the fruit ninja thing with my pocket. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is out of my lining fabric. Well, shoot. After all that planning, I get to use my new lining fabric. All right, I'm saving the mustard for my Dawn jeans. This one right here. So let's see. It looks really busy on camera, I know, sorry. I think I'll do, I love this Kelly green, but maybe we'll do this, if I can do, let's see, one. These are like swatches, so maybe I'll do a blue one and a pink one. You know, yeah. Okay, you need to do uh, the cut to flip thing. Don't forget. Cut to flip. I'm like centering the, of course it does, in the middle. <laughs> Not that anyone's gonna see it but me. Left and a right. Your new Juki 9000B. Wow, congratulations, Donna. What's the 9000B? Is that a, is that the a tabletop industrial, like the home industrial, or is that um, like the one Adina has? Like the, in the table, it's like in the table. That is so exciting. What, oh, what'd you say, Ray? I'm still taking it apart and starting again, wait. Oh, cool, okay, Ray. Is there, oh, okay, thank you for asking that. An Elna 680, which is, okay, yeah, that's right. You're not hugely impressed, okay. I've had brothers before. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, Donya. Yeah, I have friends that have those. They really like them. They're quilters, too. So I just have these uh, two pieces left, and I'm trying to decide if I want to, you know, line my bibs or not. You could even do a facing and stitch it down. Right? You know what I mean? So, oh, I need to cut this, right? Okay, I need to cut this out. What if I just did a, a facing, a one piece facing, <laughs> like that, and stitch it down? Maybe that's my, um, and then this way I'm still kind of sewing it the way you would sew it and I'm not deviating just in case someone needs the instruction. And I think I'm gonna do denim. I have plenty of fabric, unfortunately. Although maybe I could make shorts out of this piece. 
you know? Hmm. That's what I was thinking, Eliza. What I would do is I would do a facing across the top. This is the top one that goes right here. I would do denim right here and then I would do binding around the armhole. So basically all I would do is I would bind the um, armhole to a point or something. It's tricky. That juncture would be kind of tri tricky. And I'm sure that's why they didn't do it that way because explaining that in instructions would be kind of a pain in the butt. Ooh, I don't know. Is it on their YouTube channel? Mine has a speed change, but I've never fiddled with it. It's been fine. But you guys saw me that one time go back on my old industrial and it was faster. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is fast. <laughs> so let's see, do I have fabric I could use? I kind of like this. Do I have enough of this? This is a napkin. I have, a, I bought all these napkins <laughs> and washed them all and then I ironed them all. It was a little bit tedious. It almost works. Doesn't quite though. I could put a seam down the center and do one and then two, you know? Okay, cool, Adina. Yeah, I hate the fa I hate facing that flips out. And what I'm thinking too is that this would sit there, you know, like if you had this facing going across, right? You have this little loose piece underneath and I'm, I think that's what I'm not a big fan of. And I think even if you stitch your pocket through the denim, and through the lining, the facing, what'll happen is this little bit, you're still gonna have this little rumple right here, you know? What is, why is my computer thinking? Okay, it's gone, never mind. Yeah, so. Let's see here. I have a bunch of these really cool yarn dye wovens that I bought from, uh, pretty sure I bought them from Fabric Fabric Worm. Wait, who? I hope I got that right. <laughs> I'll feel really bad if I say the wrong one. But um, what I liked, well, I found her site through Instagram, but what I liked was that she kind of will curate a group of fabrics that look good together and then you can buy them because I was like do you do these in like half yard bundles because there's tons of fat quarter bundles out there and fat quarter is just not enough as a garment sewist really a half yard having just like half yards around for like pockets or um binding or something like that fat quarter is fine for binding but for certain little contrast bits, a fat quarter just sometimes just doesn't cut it, you know, or bag making. And um, she's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's a way to do it. You can either select a fat quarter bundle or you can pick linear yardage. So you can even do, oh, I really like this curated group of fabrics she's put together. It's not necessarily all by the same designer. Maybe it's a whole color palette thing. And then you can say, I want a one and a half yard bundle. And you get one and a half yards of every fabric. It's pretty cool. It's addictive too. I was kind of like, ooh, this is like, I gotta be careful here. But I do like this, you know, like this would look pretty cool in there, you know? Hmm. Those are pre-washed. I know these are pre-washed, so maybe I'll stick with this. It's just kind of lightweight. I kind of want to use denim, but I don't want to cut into my denim. Wait, I know. I 
Ha ha. Ha ha. I have a scrap of this. Ooh, Kate. That is really good feedback. So meaning, um, so isn't it into a seam at the top there? Right? It's a seam. So I keep putting the pattern away and then I need it. Why do I keep doing that? Oh yeah, here they are. Dang, I really gotta get that pattern piece that fell into the abyss of my stream setup. I do too, Eliza. Yeah. Ray! <laughs> it is! So quite a few of you here. Welcome, everybody. All right, so um, I think Kate has a good point. So this is what you're talking about back here. <clears throat> Let's check it out. Right, because you have your strap that you need, because you have to interface it as well. Did you make yours out of denim as well? There it is. Look at that cute little kitty. <laughs> oh, right. I've heard. Oh, yeah. True, Derek. I've heard of that. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate it. It's like a triangle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm looking at that right now. What is that little um, notchity do there? Oh yeah, so this is what I'm looking at right here. The canvas. Yeah, so I guess that would, that would add some bulk. Because plus you interface the straps. And then you sew it to this little area here. And when you have those little tight spots like that, these little narrow tops, it does get kind of bulky. You're, you're totally right. I think that's a good point. Hmm. So what if I... But I want denim, Kate. <laughs> As I think it would be hard to do that on a home sewing machine if you did a denim facing, like if you did these in the denim. I think you're, I, cause I don't think that they're expecting, it's not like this was designed to be a denim overall. It was designed to be, an, you know, canvas or probably lighter weight. Okay. Good. That is good. I wasn't going to interface mine, but that is such a good, good tip. Thank you. So you only interfaced half of your strap. And I think that like if you're doing maybe a lightweight canvas or like those linen cotton canvases that are really cute, you know, like, um, let me see. Uh, why don't I have one handy here? you know, like these kinds of like the cotton and steel canvases, um, you would probably want to interface this because this is pretty lightweight, you know, but with the denim, it has a lot of structure. Helen has that weight. Uh, nylon hammer and badge. There you go, Serena. Helen has a, um, you mean Helen from Helen's closet? Melin? Well, I mean, I know there's lots of solutions to this. I'm just trying to get away from not having the bib. <laughs> Sewing shopping channel. I do see, I did see that somewhere. Oh yeah, when I was looking for live streams. Oh, thanks Isabel, that's great. Isobel, that's a great tip. Or great to know that you made it. All right. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to interface my strap. I'm going to continue on with the denim facing. And I think I'll be okay. I think it'll, the hardest thing for me is going to get the, getting the points. You know, like a nice points. Yes, Helen, the designer. So do you mean she had another solution if people didn't want the bib? Facing? Yeah, right, right, right. 
All right, let's cut this doohickey out. This is my pocket facing. Awkward, awkward, awkward. There we go. My bin is getting a, <clears throat> a little out of control. And that's because I don't usually keep the pattern pieces together. So let's put my pockets. Lost these pockets. So oh, are these the those are the fronts, so I don't need those. My bib pocket is the one in the black hole. Got my back pockets. All right, and we have our pocket facing. We just need interfacing. We don't need interfacing on this anymore. Get rid of all this and this. All right, reset. Oh, I th I see, I see. Benina 830 record. Oh. Yeah, a square back. That would be a good solution, actually. And then you would put your uh, angled straps into it, like, kind of like on the, the front bib. So I think what I'm going to do, basically, the only thing I'm doing different is I'm just going to trim off this. My sewing is going to be the same. I'm going to keep this width for the entire bib. <clears throat> the bib facing. Uh, I don't think I'm calling that by the right <laughs> name, sorry. The back facing. This is the back facing piece. Now when I get here, you don't just go to a point. You have to kind of square this off like this. I know I wrote that red line, but that was just a visual thing. So do you see right here, anytime you're doing facings and one piece facings, you, you really need to make, because picture this on the fold, you need to make this a continuous line, right? You gotta be able to do that. So you could go up higher if you want, it just depends, you know, as long as you can kind of get in there with your serger, if that's what you're planning on doing. And that's how they show it in the instructions. I just wanna make sure I can maintain this width. So I feel like that's a good spot right there. So essentially my sewing is gonna be exactly the same. The only thing I'm gonna do differently is I'm probably gonna stitch my facing down. Oh, really? Wow, that's big news, Terry. Good for you. That's awesome. Then yeah, you won't have to re-thread. So then you'll have your one with electronics and then would you just use your one that doesn't have electronics for the secondary thread probably? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me shouting? Right? All right, so I have this right here. And then when I get up here. So let's look at our pocket and if it's going to interfere with our pocket. Is this the front? No, you're the front. All right, so let's look at our front here and line this all up. Oh, interesting. Why doesn't that, uh, do you hem that over it? Oh, I need to look at that. I'm gonna need some seam allowance. 
if you hem, do you hem this over it, the edge? <laughs> I may have been outsmarted here. Oh, I feel like I'm cheating. Let's see. Oh, that's stay stitching. I'm like, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I swear I saw the bib and you sew around it and then turned. Yeah, you do. All right, so why was that smaller? Why is this so much smaller? That is so much smaller. Like, I know that the dart is right there. What am I missing here? See that? There, I'll cut out this piece and you can see the difference. I may have to look at this before I actually cut this piece. And then this is the fold line right here. Cut the top edge. All of your, oh, so he's like trading one for all. All right, so see the difference? Let's look it over. Maybe it has a different seam allowance. Sorry, you guys. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure why. Why is that different? Why is that different? Oh, nice, Donna. Enjoy. I bet at lunch you were going to go watch that. That's pretty exciting. No, they're both on the fold. They're both on the fold. They should just line up, right? It's like I cut out a different size, but I printed out one size or that this is hemmed over this one. I legit don't know why that is. That is so weird. So maybe what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set these aside. Is this one like this too? <laughs> Let's see. This one does have a different seam allowance right there. This one does the same thing. Huh. I actually don't know. I don't say that very often, do I? So I think like what I could do is just make my facing pieces here. I mean, I could cut them out. We can try and sew it, but I don't think it'll work. I'm missing something. But yeah, I would just pin this together, trace around it, make my parallel line, and then cut it out. And same with the front. So if you want to do a facing, if you're drafting a facing, that's what I would do. Close your darts. Uh, I like to use removable tape sometimes when I'm doing this, when you can find the end. Oh, come on. Wait, I felt it. I felt it. Oh, it's a, like one of those. Here we go. So this way I can kind of tear off the tape really easily. Because you can't always pin like I did on that one. <laughs> Oh, 
is that what it is? Oh, that's it. Thank you. The overalls are on the seam. I'm such a silly goose. That's it. Thank you, Martina. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Cool. Well, I'm a doofus. We're good. I am sorry about that. But I do want to check my pocket uh, placement for this. All right. So my bad. Line up your facing to the perimeter here. Yeah, and there's a seam allowance there. Thank you, Martina. It's crowdsourced overall sewing at its finest. So here is my pocket placement right here. So this is going to go about right here. And if I were to top stitch this seam here, could I hide it behind here? I don't want it to be in a weird spot. I think it would actually fall below this fold line of this chest pocket here. And so then it won't distract the eye, you know? Maybe I'll make it a little bit uh, deeper here just to make sure. I don't mind it showing here. You know what I mean? See you, Sharon. Enjoy this show. This must be so exciting. Yeah, of course, they're pants. Exactly, Barbara. <laughs> Logic. <laughs> Got the best of me there. All right, we'll just make this a little bit deeper. These are my only two pieces left. And then you guys can guilt free. Don't go watch your show. I think that's very exciting. All right. I don't want to cut on those. I want to cut on this right here. All right. Crisis averted. I imagine people being like, there's a seam there! Just shouting at me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Melin, that does happen. There are some um, pants like that, but I wasn't thinking that. That's what I need to do, Elena. I think I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, Derek, enjoy. Yeah, it's not rubbing it in our faces exactly. <laughs> I think we have other things they don't. Okay. So can I get this off this scrap? Cause this is the same fabric. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Let's see here. Uh, the grain line is kind of hard to determine. I could see I can see it on this. I can't see it on the back. Yep. <laughs> You're not jealous at all. <laughs> all right. So we have this one here. I'm just kind of trying to see. Can I get it on here? Yes, I can. All right. So we want to fold it about right here to be able to get both pieces. All right. It's always kind of weird cutting into pieces that are weirdly shaped like this. I bought enough of this fabric. When I used to buy denim, it was really hard to find at the time. And so I would buy enough for like two pairs of pants. <sighs> and this is probably from then. Okay, I need to do a little bit more this way. Oof. Okay, we're good over here. All right, made it. Let's so make sure you get this grain line on these little tiny narrow facings is really important because it can kind of throw off the weight if it lays flat, so say I didn't get this. This is the fold right here. So if I didn't get this, and in, in the garment industry, you would never, ever, 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 ever have a pattern piece on the fold. They would always be uh, cut open and you would never cut it on the fold because fabric is all comes 
cut uh, opens out flat. It comes on rolls, so it's laid out flat. And so, and this is why too, like even if you just got this, I don't know, like a 16th of an inch off right there, what happens is you've created this, because it can I, um, exponentially changes the angle of this and you've increased the length right here. And then when you go to sew it in and you kind of fudge it, what happens is you have this little bubble like this of under your garment of your facing. I'm sure you've seen that before, you know, where it's kind of like this. So it, it sewed into the seam. That was all fine because you didn't change that. You didn't change it. You got this point on the fold perfectly. But if this moves at all like this, this loose edge gets bigger and then it kind of ruffles underneath your garment. I don't know. So you gotta be really careful. And this is kind of uh, something tricky for anyone to do because it's such a small distance here that it's really easy to not get it on the grain. The longer distance you have, the easier it is to kind of keep it on the grain. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way, Ray. I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. Do I want to do that or not? I don't like cutting these pieces. They're notoriously get off pretty easily. Especially if you're doing something in linen. Linen has a tendency to kind of relax and kind of grow. That's my experience with it. it kind of, and, and you know, look at all this bias right here. You know, this is on a curve. This is on a curve. There's just so much. I and mean, if you have linen, it just kind of starts unraveling, a little disappearing. Even this edge, since it's on the bias, it probably wouldn't unravel. But you know, these straight edges, it will get a little like thready here and here. And then, you know, it starts relaxing and kind of going, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> and then it gets bigger and bigger. All right, so we have this piece done and I'm just gonna put it over here. And then I'm just going to turn this one over and cut it. So we can see what we're doing. Dang, you're going from watching me to great British, British sewing bee. Like, I can't compete with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the quality of that would be so good. Okay, so I'm just getting this on the fold like I was just talking about. And, you know, I didn't really iron this fabric perfectly flat, so it is a little bubbly. So I'm doing my best. <laughs> mm. Let's clip it here. why there is that is it just because of the federal trade commission is it a monetary thing i wonder why it's not here yet you know like why we can't at least watch it on because there's the Bra the great british baking something or other right so why can't we see that on netflix but we can't see the sewing one you know what i mean getting really into this here. There we go. Fabric in the fabric scraps bin, paper in the paper bin. Perfect. All right, we're ready now. Really? Bake off. Thank you, Charlie. 
Hmm. I didn't realize some of them were like had been sewing 18 months and is that designed for more drama? I think either way it would be more drama, right? More experience or less. Because then it's kind of titillating. This person only has <laughs> this much experience. Do they have what it takes? God, I can't even imagine being on one of those shows. <laughs> Although I will say the one thing I really thrive at is uh, designing under constraints. So if you're like, all right, this is the only fabric you can use, and then your pattern must have these five things, I am like, I am there for that, and I'm fast. So I think, like, those would be my two things. As far as, like, style points go, I don't know how they rate that stuff, but I feel like in styling, I might fall short. Because sometimes I get so tunnel vision on practical and some of those other things, I would forget about, like, what's on trend, because I have no clue what's on trend. I'm just really clueless with that. You guys always have to shout about that kind of stuff for me. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's what I've heard. I've heard such great things about the fact that there is no drama. That sounds so appealing. Oh, pa oh okay, Derek, okay. Yeah, I think I might do that, Elena. Is that the one you like? Ah, oh, okay. I'm a professional. I don't get paid though. Twenty ten Q. Oh, okay. Isabel's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I would never even, I'm not even, I'm not like trying to enter in any of those things either. Yeah, like Project Runway, I feel like any, that's open to anybody. Uh, but I think your goals with what you want to do in, in the industry are pretty specific. And I didn't want, I didn't have those kinds of goals. All right, so... Here's my facing from my pocket, right? No one will know it says, it has pockets, like that, right? <laughs> we have our back pockets here. I'll put it upside down so you can see it. Right there. We have our facing. Our facing. I want to see this though. <laughs> and then we have our strap. Uh, where's our bib pocket? Oh, the bib pocket fell in the vortex. Okay. We'll get that out in a bit. So, yeah, I did know. That's pretty cool, Beverly. That's so cool. I would love to help out like on something like that. That'd be so fun, you know, like behind the scenes. <laughs> that is pretty cool. What's on the first season? What did I ask? Oh, they were on the first season. Perks to being in the first seasons, right? Yeah, our project went away isn't, I mean, I haven't watched it in years, but it was, it was never that bad. I think it was more like people crumbling under pressure. I watched that one Netflix one. It was okay. I just thought the hosts were distracting. <laughs> All right, we're ready to sew. I'll be here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Um, thank you so much for everybody coming, the donations. I really appreciate that. Thanks for the tips and the, um, you want to be a phone. Oh, do they have a phone a friend? Oh my God. I would love to be the phone a friend. I am already a phone a friend for so many people in sewing. In fact, 
you guys, this is the brutal truth. Sometimes they text me at 1030 at night because that's when they can sew. And I'm like, I'm playing a game. I don't want to answer a sewing question. And then I'm like scribbling like how to draw the pocket or whatever on a piece of paper next to me and taking pictures while I have my headphones on and my PlayStation controller. And my friends are getting mad because I'm not like holding my end of the game. And I'm like, I just, they have no idea what I'm doing, you know? So I would love to be the phone a friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that exactly, Elena. Yes. That would be so fun. But anyway, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, lots of new faces. I really appreciate seeing you guys here. I love it. And anyone who wants to lurk, totally welcome as well. And I will be sewing these tomorrow, part one and part two on Saturday. Next week is the, the Texas Top by Personal Clothing, a new pattern company that Hearts Fabric sent us this. So that'll be good. I, um, I've i seen it. It's like PVE, right, Mrs. Necro? But isn't it only PC or Xbox? See you, Eliza. Yeah, I hope you are too, Eliza. Thanks again for all of the jeans um, comments and suggestions. And I learned so much from you guys telling me. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, it's always fun to hang out with you guys. I really appreciate it. And I have a new video today for all those folks that are kind of interested in that design and manufacturing series. I feel like I'm doing that mostly for my own, just like closing the door on my business thing. But um, if you do have a small sewn products business, you might get a little bit out of some of those. Um, I know I would have loved to have known some of the things not to do that I did. So yeah, nice, Hannah. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, you're welcome, you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I love hanging out with and sewing with you guys. So have a really great rest of your day. Adina, good luck on your buttonhole attachment. I'll check out the Facebook thing, but I doubt I have anything to offer. But I'll try and find that video and send it to you if you're still here. You're probably studying or at school or something. Hey, Corey, thanks for, you're the one who became a Patreon patron. Thank you. Appreciate that. Same with Michelle. Those aren't showing up in my alerts. Otherwise, we're going to play them. So, all right. Yeah, Saturday. Join Saturday. Oh, it's Xbox and PlayStation. Oh, I keep asking that in chats and nobody answers, Mrs. Necro. Good to know. I've been playing Remnant from the Ashes with the friend. It was a free game. It's actually pretty cool. It's a, it's a really beautiful, like, all the graphics are really cool. So anyway, I don't bore you with that. So I'll see you guys later. See you guys Saturday if you can't make it tomorrow. Um, and then I'll see you tomorrow for part one of the sewing. I'm going to kind of sew this in like a denim jeans style. So top stitching and everything. Ooh, We'll see about that. That means changing a lot. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys.